A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Then Peter said in reply, Look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or fields for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
please stand as you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our 
defended from the fear of all men. May Cossacks and I may rest and fly through the merits of Jesus Christ our Savior. this evening and thank you for joining us in keeping this beautiful and meaningful appointment on uh, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. We uh, take a week off next week because it will be Thanksgiving week, so in advance we wish you all a very happy and restful, meaningful uh, few days of uh, perhaps a little more quietude uh, than we've normally been having in our lives just lately. But uh, again, thank you for, uh, for being here with us tonight. Uh, many of you probably have heard or seen the email that uh, Dean Owens and family have, have a very uh, tragic and unexpected death in, in their family. So uh, he's needless to say not with us tonight. But uh, uh, by a happy accident of planning, we had uh, right along planned for Adrian Cook to be our homilist tonight, and Adrian, I think nearly all of you know, is our wonderful priest associate here at, uh, at Trinity and does so many things so well and so beautifully, and uh, we're grateful for her joining us tonight, and she'll enlighten us just a little bit about that wonderful person, Hilda, Abbess of Whitby. I, I like the sound of those words, so uh, I hope you all uh, enjoy learning a little more about Hilda. And, Adrian, thank you so much. Our God stoops as a grandmother stoops when she finds you standing at her front door, your arms outstretched with clumsy fingers clad in mittens, pressing her glowing doorbell. In one swooping motion, the door swings open and the aging woman bends down low. It's magical how she hears your need for a cup of something warm without you ever saying a word. Your red cheeks tell her and the snow whispers, you are cold as it rests on the hairs of your head and she draws near her lips a thermometer placed on your forehead. Measure with precision just how hot to make your cup of soup. Oh my, she yelps, come inside where it's warm. You poor thing. And you are poor. Your pockets hold no money to offer her in exchange for all that she has to give you. But of course, she seeks nothing. You are her child, born of the daughter from her own womb. She stoops to meet you at eye level, assessing your need. She stoops to lift your heart as her arms lift you up and take you inside. Today is the feast day of Hilda of Whitby. She is the patron saint of learning, but she is also the patron saint of poetry. So I could think of no better way to begin tonight than to offer a poem based on today's Psalm 113, which honors this feast day. Who is like our Lord God who stoops, stoops to behold us, 
from the heavens to the earth. That is what the psalm asks us today. Who is like our God who stoops? It asks us to consider God's ability to lean down from heaven and lift us up. Have you ever imagined God as a grandmother who opens her door to you and immediately stoops to pick you up? What does that image evoke for you? For me, it reminds me of my Italian grandmother whose greatest joy was to see me fat and happy. Her doorbell is easy for me to ring. But maybe that doorbell isn't for you. Maybe you didn't have a grandmother like that. And you wonder, if you risk reaching out to ring the bell, will God even be home? A few years ago, I was in the grocery store and saw an infant reach out to a small elderly woman who passed by, cane in hand. See, the elderly woman stood at the same height as the child who was being held in her mother's arms. And it was the eye contact that seems to have drawn the child. The woman was able to meet her right where she needed to be met. I think that's what the psalm is trying to tell us, that God always meets us at eye level, no matter where she finds us. And if it wasn't your grandmother, is there someone in your life who meets you that way? Perhaps tonight you could imagine that person's face on the other side of the door as you stand ready to press the bell. For like that child met by the elderly woman in the grocery store, God often meets us in the most unsuspecting places and people. God met Hilda of Whitby in an unsuspecting place. God found a nun in the English court of King Edwin. You see, Hilda was born a princess. She was set to follow in the footsteps of her older sisters princesses who had already been married off to royalty. But instead of choosing that life of wealth and privilege, Hilda recognized her own inner poverty and accepted the call of the bishop to become a nun at age 33. She had lived half her life in the secular world. And at the same age Christ gave his life for God, Hilda found her way to the doorbell of heaven where she stood long enough for God to reach down and scoop her up. Through her devotion and studies as a nun, Hilda founded the Abbey of Whitby, a place known for justice, peace, and charity. As she grew in her spiritual life, she soon became a symbol of God to many. She was called mother by most, and even grandmother by some. For she became known as a wise woman able to meet others at eye level and draw them from unusual circumstances into the household of God. It was said she had a knack for turning poets into monks and monks into poets. One such transformation was in the life of the simple shepherd man named Kedman. As legend tells it, one night, some monks heard the shepherd Kedman reciting his poetry to the sheep and brought him in to see Hilda. After hearing his poetry and his story, she immediately invited him to take holy orders, as he had truly been given what she called a gift from God. Though Kedman was already in his 50s, he accepted the call to monastic life and began learning sacred history and doctrine. He grew to become a great poet, capable of producing the most beautiful verse. He was responsible for a considerable number of poems, covering a wide range of Christian topics. And having been a shepherd for most of his life, Kedman's gift from God, as Hilda called it, was writing spiritual poetry in the vernacular so that many people could read God's word. 
Hilda knew that poetry and God's word went hand in hand. Poetry has a way of evoking meaning and new understanding through image and metaphor. That is often what the Psalms do for us. It's what they do for us in our scriptures and in our prayers as they have an even song today. And we have honored Hilda's life by singing poetry and even song. As the scriptures have washed over you in song, that abbess of Whitby invites you to consider how the poetry of scripture might lead you into the transformative, life-changing power of God. So as you continue to pray this night, perhaps you might imagine yourself that child on the doorstep of heaven, regardless of your age, and wonder alongside Hilda and Kedman what gift from God you might find on the other side of the divine grandmother's door.
Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the prayer found on page 3, titled, Night Prayer. Be present, Spirit of God within us, your dwelling place and home, that this house may be one where all darkness is penetrated by your light, all troubles calmed by your peace, all evil redeemed by your love, all pain transformed in your suffering and all dying glorified in your risen life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May God bless you and keep you. May the light of the Holy Spirit shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the face of Christ turn towards you and give you peace. Amen. Amen.